okay, going to show you from the word of God that the quote unquote great tribulation is in fact God's wrath. Contrary to what the post tribber heretics will say that, oh, it's not God's wrath. It's not God's wrath. Yes, it is. Okay. Going to show you proof of that from the word of God, not from Catholic church tra traditions, not from, uh, the words of men, not from, you know, papal bulls, that kind of stuff from the word of God alone. You see, I could care less, uh, if the uh, yeah, pre-trip rapture was invented by John Nelson Darby in the 1830s, which it clearly wasn't, but even if it was, I don't care, okay? I only care what the Word of God says. That's my final standard. Not the words of men, not the doctrines of men, but the doctrines of God. So I'm going to show you proof from the scriptures alone that the quote-unquote Great Tribulation, which is properly called the uh, time of Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah 30, verse 7, or the time of the heathen, Ezekiel 33. Ezekiel chapter 30 verse number 3 I'll put it that way but here is proof that and there's some other scriptures I'm going to go over but Isaiah chapter 34 is a prophecy about the second coming and about this it's a future prophecy about this this future time period known as the time of Jacob's trouble or the time of the heathen and watch how it describes it okay keep in mind and the second coming is also described here as well which happens at the end as well but here I have Isaiah chapter 34 uh, which again is a prophecy about the the uh, quote unquote great tribulation it says come here ye nations to hear and hearken ye people let i uh, let the ear earth hear and all that is therein the world and all things that come forth of it go verse two for the indignation of the lord is upon all nations that's why ezekiel chapter 30 verse 3 calls it the time of the heathen Okay? Because God is pouring out judgment upon the Gentile nations, and it's called the time of Jacob's trouble in Jeremiah 30, verse 7, because he's pouring out wrath on unbelieving Israel. So I just had to fix my uh, blue light canceling glasses. But look at that. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. Compare that to Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 to 21, the Battle of Armageddon, which of course happens at the end. But here you have a description of this time period. Uh, uh, verse 3, their slain also, also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall, shall, shall be melted with their blood. Again, talking about the Battle of Armageddon in Revelation 19, compare it to that. That's another thing you do when you're a, a born-again Bible-believing Christian. You compare scripture with scripture. You don't do like the post-tribbers and just base your whole thing off one verse or two verses, you know, from Matthew 24, verses 29 to 31. You don't just base it off one verse. You compare scripture with scripture, which is what you're supposed to do. You can see 1 Corinthians 12, sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13 on that. Uh, verse 4, And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled up, Roll together as a scroll, and all their host shall fall down, as a as a leaf falleth from the vine, as and as a falling fig from a fig tree. Compare this to Revelation chapter six, verse thirteen to fourteen. Heavens depart as a scroll. You know, it's a very terrible time when Jesus Christ comes back. He's not going to be some kind of hippie. You know, oh, I love everyone. No, it's going to be a very terrifying time that heaven actually departs as a scroll. Uh, it's not going to be a fun time if you're caught up in this time period if you miss the rapture uh, verse 5 for my sword shall be ba shall be bathed in heaven behold it shall come down upon indunima hope i'm saying that right in indemia hope i think i'm saying that right and upon all the people of my curse to judgment so it's also it's basically god's judgment which is essentially the same thing as his wrath look at verse 6 the sword of the lord is filled with blood it is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams, for the Lord hath a sacrifice in Bor Bozra, and a great slaughter in the land of Indemia. I think I'm saying that right. And it goes down there, but then you go down to verse seven, and the unicorns, the unicorns. And by the way, when it says unicorns, it's not referring to the mystical, you know, pagan, um, you know, creatures you're thinking of when you see on like what this, like you know, My Little Pony or these little. TV shows or whatever, these these toys or whatever. No, you, biblical unicorns are not, you know, what, what, like my, what you'll see in My Little Pony or some of these other TV shows. It's not not at all what it's what it's what a biblical unicorn is. I'll put it that way. And the unicorn shall come down with them, and the bullocks with the bulls, and their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made fat with fatness. Sorry, my voice is starting to give out. It's kind of later at night, but um, 
Again, compare this to Revelation 19. Or sorry, Revel yeah, Revelation 19, verses 11 to 21, the Battle of Armageddon. Um, and look at verse 8. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance, and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. It's the day of the Lord's vengeance. But also, another good scripture to compare it to is uh, another future prophecy about this time period is uh, Zephaniah chapter 3, verse number 9. Uh, sorry, I went to Zechariah. Sorry, not, not Zechariah, Zephaniah. Went to the wrong chapter there. Chapter 3, verse number 9. Uh, is it verse 9? Sorry, Zephaniah 3, verse 8. Sorry, my bad. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 8, not, not verse 9. Zephaniah 3, 8. Therefore uh, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey, for my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms, to pour out upon them mine indignation, and all my even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Interesting. So you have not, here you have in Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 8 another future prophecy about this time period and it's described as God pouring out his wrath upon the heathen nations. Again, Ezekiel chapter 30 verse 3 is the time of the heathen in terms of God judging the uh, Gentile nations. The church has nothing to do with that. The saved, born again body of Christ were taken out before that. Not It's not for believers. It's for God's wrath upon unbelieving Israel and the Gentile, and the Gentile nations. Another good... Uh, prophecy on that. Isaiah chapter number 13. Uh, it says, The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amoz did see. Uh, verse, this is, it is Isaiah chapter 13. I might have mentioned that earlier. Lift ye up uh, a banner upon the high mountain. Exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand that they may go uh, into the gates of the nobles. I have commanded the sanct my sanctified ones. And I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger. Interesting. Even them that rejoice in my highness. And you go to verse 4. And the noise of the multitudes in the mountains, like as of a great people, tr tumultus, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together, the Lord of hosts mustereth the host of the battle. Battle of Armageddon. Uh, verse 5. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, you know, chasing the Jews into the mountains. Uh, from the end of heaven, even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation did destroy the whole land. Uh, howl ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand, it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Interesting. So again, you have the day of the Lord being destruction. You know, kind of like how the time of Jacob's trouble is described as being a day. Alas, that day is great in Jeremiah 30 verse 7. So you compare scripture to scripture, you see that the quote-unquote great tribulation is in fact God's wrath. It's not Satan's wrath as the uh, post tribber heretics want to say. Uh, yeah, verse 7. Therefore shall all hands be, be faint, and every man, man's heart shall melt, kind of like man's heart failing them with fear. And they shall be afraid, pangs, sorrows shall take hold them. They shall, they shall be in pain as a woman travaileth. They shall be amazed at one another. Their faces shall be as flames. Uh, verse 9. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. And you can go down there, but it's clearly describing the quote unquote Great Tribulation, and more proof on that. Uh, actually, here it's describing the Second Coming, because it's describing the Great Tribulation, and here it's describing the Second Coming. Uh, which happens, of course, at the end of the Great Tribulation. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 10. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give light, the sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not shall ca shall cause her light shall not cause her light to shine. And I will look at this. I will punish the world. This is verse eleven. I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked and the and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and I will and lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. Notice that uh, he'll punish the world for their evil. It's the uh, great tribulation. It's God's wrath. But look at verse 10, how it says the stars of heaven and the constellations, the moon is not giving our light. What does that sound familiar to? Well, the common verse that the post-tribbers like to use to, to prove their heresy of the post-trib rapture, Matthew chapter 24, because what you had there was a prophecy in verse 10, a prophecy about the second coming. Matthew chapter 24, verses 
29, 31. Immediately after the tribulation, see, they always stop right there. They won't they won't read the full verse. They'll say, see, after the tribulation. See the raptures after the tribulation. Um, let's keep reading. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, okay, tribulation is not a title, okay? It's a, it's a description, never a title, which is funny because I showed it in one of my videos. Uh, in a video titled uh, the, the modern versions, it basically a video about how the modern versions uh, teach post-trip doctrine. I showed how the modern versions actually make the Great Tribulation into a title. So if you're a King James only, if you're professing to be King James only and a post-tripper and you're making the Great Tribulation into a title, you're actually lining up with the modern versions, which make it into a title uh, and, and not just simply a description. But look at this. Of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man, and all the tribes of the earth mourn. We get that we get that right there. So it lines up with Isaiah chapter 13. The sun is darkened, the moon's not giving her light, the stars fall from heaven. Again, it's not going to be a very fun time. It's going to be very, very scary, very terrifying when Jesus Christ returns. But the best verse of scripture to prove that it is his uh, yes, in fact, it is God's wrath, not Satan's wrath, or not just you know, oh, you know, persecution of the church. Um, here's a here's a good scripture to prove that. Because who is the one that's opening the seals? Okay, because they'll say, well, the wrath doesn't come until the very end. Okay, but who is the one opening the seals? Let's see, Revelation chapter six, verse one. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, as I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. Verse 2, and this, and this is where the Antichrist is unleashed. And we hold us a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. Okay, but who is opening the seals? Because, you know, post tribbers will always try to say, well, those scriptures in, in Isaiah 34 and Isaiah 13, they're just about the end of the tribulation where God's wrath comes in. Um, what do you do with this? Who is the one opening the seals? It's the Lamb. It's Jesus Christ. So who is the one essentially pouring out the wrath of the seals? Jesus Christ. So I just wanted to show you guys that tribulation is, you know, the tribulation is in fact God's wrath. Again, it's properly called the time of Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah 30 verse 7, or the time of the heathen, Ezekiel chapter 30 verse 3. But it is in fact God's wrath. So don't believe the lies of the post-tribber heretics who say, oh, it's not God's wrath. It's just, it's Satan's wrath and whatever. Uh, heresy. It is God's wrath. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.